Nations all around the world have been experimenting with a new monetary concept. Central Bank Digital Currencies, or CBDCs for short, are digital currencies that are distributed and managed directly by a country's central bank or reserve. China has been developing their CBDC since 2014 and is expanding their palette to include an additional six regions this year. Their CBDC is essentially a digital version of the Yuan that is traded by scanning QR codes from your phone at payment terminals that are operated by merchants. But on the surface, the concept is strange because payment systems like this are nothing new and the majority of wealth in the world is already digital. So how do CBDCs differ to the fiat currencies that are already commonplace? The major difference can be summed up in one word, centralization. Let's explain. In typical monetary systems today, citizens interface with private banks. A citizen will open up an account with a private bank where they can deposit and withdraw funds. And they can also use cards or apps issued by those banks to purchase goods and services. Behind the scenes, these private banks aren't completely independent of each other. They are all beholden to the nation's central bank, which sets regulations on how much money private banks are allowed to lend out, how much interest should be paid on loans, how much money banks need to keep in reserve, and so on. In a world without a central bank, history has shown time and time again that private banks will over leverage themselves, cause bank runs, and lead to crippling economic panics. But in a world without private banks, all of the decisions for creating, reserving, and loaning out money are decided by the state, which leads to corruption, where some groups are favoured over others, for political purposes. CBDCs are a move towards more centralised banking power. Instead of interfacing with private banks, citizens will interface directly with the central bank itself. With the CBDC, the government will have direct access to the transaction records of all of its citizens and the ability to instantly terminate any funds that they deem problematic. Ukraine, Sweden and Thailand are also undergoing their own pilots, and many other countries such as Australia, the United States, the United Kingdom, India, Iran, Russia and Germany have begun to explore and research the possibility of implementing their own CBDCs. To understand why nations around the world are moving in this direction, we should explore the monetary landscape of China, especially as they are the leading nation in this area. Between 1980 and 2010, the economy of China grew at an astonishing rate, but growth like that is impossible to sustain. The power of the Communist Party is very dependent on its ability to keep its constituents rich. So it's slowing economic might. The government has had to resort to increasingly socially oppressive means. In 2015, the government started trialling various versions of a social credit system that aimed to measure the trustworthiness of citizens according to criteria set by the government. Low social credit scores could deny citizens essential services such as investment permits, travel, education, jobs and tax rebates. Other precautions China has taken to control their populace include purging political opposition, enacting the national security law in Hong Kong, imposing capital controls banning cryptocurrency and threatening to break up Ant Group. Let's talk about a few of these to see how China is losing control of its economy and the faith of its richest citizens. China has restrictions called capital controls which prevent the movement of money out of the country. Individuals purchasing foreign currencies are limited to 50,000 US dollars a year or the equivalent of that. Since 2016, all foreign purchases by corporations have to be approved by the government and many companies have been forced to sell off assets in order to repatriate funds. Hong Kong was one way for citizens to move their money out of China, since the banking system there has a different set of rules to mainland China. Then Bitcoin became another major platform for moving funds out of China. A lot of people mistakenly believe that the rise of Bitcoin in 2017 was due to black market spending, but that's only a very small part of the story. A much more important driver came from Chinese people wanting to protect their wealth from an authoritarian government. In 2017, the People's Bank of China acknowledged that China accounted for a whopping 90% of global Bitcoin trading. People in China were moving their money out of the country in droves. So in September of 2017, China outright banned the trading of cryptocurrencies. They closed down 88 crypto exchanges and terminated 85 initial coin offerings. Major exchanges like Binance had to move their entire operations to other countries. Then in 2020, the government enacted the National Security Law on Hong Kong, which essentially erased the region's autonomy. 
The purpose of these controls are to prevent wealth from leaving the nation, but in reality, imposing more controls will just cause more uncertainty and motivate more people to find more ways to protect their wealth. There is now a giant black market in China that allows people to trade Bitcoin directly with other people without having to go to an exchange and leaving the government powerless to track them. Now let's talk about what happened with Ant Group in 2020 and how this relates to CBDCs. For people who don't know, Ant Group was founded by Jack Ma, the founder of Alibaba, and it owns the largest digital payment platform in China. Jack Ma has become the proverbial canary in a coal mine for billionaires in China. In October of 2020, Jack Ma addressed an assembly of high-profile figures and delivered a controversial speech that criticized the government's restrictions on the financial system. The government responded by blocking the highly anticipated Ant Group IPO, they started to take steps into breaking up the company, and Jack Ma disappeared for three months. The price of Bitcoin between 2018 and October 2020 bounced between 3 and 11,000 US dollars. But since Jack Ma gave his speech in October 2020, the price has shot up all the way to as high as 60,000 US dollars. Other commentators believe that CBDCs are needed in China in order to compete with fintech companies like WeChat and Ant Group that are getting too big. But these companies really don't pose any threat to the CCP. Instead of spending 6 to 8 years on developing a CBDC, they could easily eliminate all the leaders of these companies overnight and replace them with state officials without giving it a second thought. There is also propaganda going on in China that is pushing the belief that the CBDC is a surefire way of propelling the yuan into world reserve currency status, overtaking the relevance of the US dollar, and negating US sanctions. But this is just a distraction from the truth. The US dollar is the world reserve currency. This means that other countries prefer to reserve the currency in order to maintain their wealth, and it's the preferred medium of exchange for major international transactions. There is no way that other countries are going to hold the digital yuan in reserve if they knew that the Chinese government would have unfettered access to all their transaction data and the ability to instantly terminate their funds whenever they like. If the government told the people what the real purpose of the digital yuan was, then there'd be uncertainty, resistance and panic. People would refrain from turning in their physical cash for digital cash, and even more money would leave the country altogether. But telling people that the digital yuan is necessary for overthrowing the evil American empire is an easy manipulation. The truth is that the Chinese economy is struggling more than it has in a long time and having wealth in China is worthless if the government can choose to confiscate it whenever they please. The Chinese people know this and a CBDC is just the next natural step towards preventing dissidents from protecting their wealth from an increasingly desperate and tyrannical government that they are quickly losing all faith in. Hey guys, thanks for watching. This is a new channel, so if you like the content, please like and subscribe to support us. And let us know what you think in the comments.